super fun floral day. I am. So I decided to use an extra pass for Epcot because we did not get to see or try as many things as the Flower Garden Festival has to offer the last time we were here. There are so many delicious looking treats that I really want to try and I will let you guys know what I think about them today. And yeah, let's, oh my gosh, let's have fun. I'm really excited. Are you excited? Let's go, let's have some fun. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. We are officially in Epcot. I'm looking at the gorgeous spaceship Earth. She looks so majestic all the time. And what's really awesome is I am maskless. So Walt Disney World currently has new rules for the mask mandates. And so if you are vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask while outside. However, whenever you hop on an attraction or go into any building, you have to have the mask on. So I have my mask in my pocket and at the ready for if I hop on any ride or go into any building. Also, what's new is no more temperature checks. So the uh, lines get in, wasn't too too bad because we didn't have to wait for temperature check just went through security and scanned my magic band and now we're in so underneath spaceship earth you can see the all new lighting that's being put on for the 50th anniversary okay so what i didn't tell you is that we rope dropped epcot today so we arrived at about 8 30 not 8 30 oh my god 9 30 and we are just now getting in at 10 41. none of the food booths are going to be open until 11. we learned that the hard way the last time we rope dropped and so what we are going to do is we are going to go into world showcase specifically to ride frozen ever after before the line gets crazy oh, guys so in the mecca pavilion there were cast members there to let everyone know that Frozen Ever After is having some technical difficulties. And so they're gonna have a delayed opening today. Wait, do we want to so wait completely ever? change the plans. We are going to go to Soren instead. Okay. When you are planning your Disney vacation and you're expecting, you know, fast passes and rope drop, you need to learn to be a little strategic. So, there are different tiers of fast passes. In the highest tier, you can sign up for Test Track, which you can hear in the background. You can sign up for Soren, or you can sign up for Frozen Ever After. I personally am not a big fan of the new Test Track. I would far much rather wait in the short one, one single rider line than I would wasting a fast pass on the new Test Track. Soren is one of the best rides here at Walt Disney World. And Frozen Ever After is that ride that you might have to go on if you want a fun trip with your little girl or little boy. If your kid loves Frozen, you have to go on Frozen Ever After. Otherwise your entire trip will be ruined because your little kid's gonna be like, Elsa, Elsa, Elsa. So I would suggest maybe getting a fast pass for uh, Soren or for Frozen Ever After and then expect to hop on the other one during rope drop in order to get on with a low weight. And then with the other fast passes, the lower tiers, I would highly suggest to plan your fast passes earlier on in the day. That way you can fiddle faddle throughout the rest of the day and um, be able to get multiple fast passes, not just three, but like four or five during your day. Now I'm going to preface this uh, with fast passes are currently not available here at Walt Disney World, but they should be coming back pretty soon. And we are in the Land Pavilion. And as you can see, I have my mask on because you have to have your mask on in any building here at Walt Disney World. 
But once when we leave, we can take it right off. I nicely asked the cast members if they could sit in the front row and usually if you ask nicely they will let you sit in the front row so hello and welcome to Soren. my name is Patrick and I'll be your chief light attendant today we'll begin boarding in a few minutes but first I'd like to acquaint you with some important safety information when the doors to your flight open please take a seat and store all carry-on items in the under seat compartment this includes cameras, purses, hats, and of course, these little beauties. Okay, let's review. That is seat, seat belt, carry-on items, safety, strength, fear of heights, keep your hands and arms inside at all times. Yes. Yeah, have a nice flight. are done with Soren. Let's get some food. Oh my goodness. Why well, last time I didn't have breakfast. And guys, I'm hungry. And what? I think we're gonna go over to the Germany pavilion and get ourselves a streusel. Hey, that sounds so good. And streusel, in my opinion, is a breakfast food. So let's go give it a try. And on our way over there, I want to talk to you guys about how many Weight Watcher points I get in a day. So I get 30 Weight Watcher points on the green plan. And I get about 25 uh, weekly points that I can dive into if I go through all of my daily allotment. But if you do not go through your daily allotment, four Weight Watcher points from that day, we'll move on over to your weekly. So if you don't go through too many daily points, your weekly can get up to about like 35 Weight Watcher points. I'm also going to show you guys how to calculate your points. Uh, it can be a little tricky, especially when you're eating out and the item that you're getting isn't something that is already in the Weight Watcher system. So, especially since with the offerings, they are smaller than what Weight Watchers might be thinking you're eating. What you're eating at festivals are little snacks. They're not full meals. So that is something else that you gotta keep in mind when you're calculating your points. I've noticed that a lot of the food offerings are around six points on the green plan, which is the strictest of the plans. So if you are on Weight Watchers and you want to do the festival, don't be discouraged because there are foods that you can eat at the festivals. And because they're such small offerings, they really aren't that many points. So you can still enjoy the festival. And Weight Watchers is designed so you can enjoy being on a quote unquote diet. It's not a diet, it's just teaching you how to do proportion control. Queen Anna is at her summer house. Hi Anna! Thank you, so do you. Very regal. <laughs> that was so awesome, we got to see Queen Anna. She looks gorgeous in her dress and in her with her crown on. 
That was a huge surprise. I was not expecting to see her. Uh, you can usually see either Anna, Elsa, and sometimes Olaf outside of their summer house. So like, if you're just passing through Arendelle, peer over to that little alcove and you might be able to see one of them. And when you do see them, it's a huge surprise because you don't expect it. I really hope that when things go back to normal, they will still have characters popping up randomly in order to have a little bit of extra magic put into your day. So we are at the beer market, under the known as the farmer's market, in order to get this right there. That's gonna be our breakfast. I think that counts as a breakfast food. I mean like, who else had toaster strudel as a kid? So this right here is the cheese strudel. It looks so good. It has some powdered sugar on it, some berries. Now let's go on over to Weight Watchers. Oh my goodness. Can you see? Okay. So we're gonna go into breakfast. We're going to type in cheese strudel. Cheese strudel. We're gonna hit the top one right here. And as you can see, it is six Weight Watcher points. We're gonna hit track food. And now cheese strudel is in as my breakfast. Six points for this is not that bad. I was expecting for it to be a whole lot higher. Well, let's give it a try. So I got some cheese, some berries, some strudel in there. a little bit of tartness from the strawberries and the blueberries. The uh, cheese is nice and smooth. I love how flaky the strudel is. I do think that this is worth the six points. So I found an amazing spot to try some of the festival uh, offerings. And it's right here in the Germany Pavilion. So at the waterfront, I'm going to turn my camera around right now, are picnic tables. And I was actually sitting right here. It was nice and secluded. And I had a beautiful view of Spaceship Earth. The Imagination Pavilion. Some Disney birds. Look at this one right here. It's got his wings open. He's a pretty boy, look at him. But this spot is great. I would definitely would suggest to if you're going to grab an offering from Germany, come on over here and grab yourself a picnic table. It's way better than one of the standalone tables that are scattered around World Showcase where you have to stand or trying to balance things on your lap while sitting on a bench. So, picnic tables, they're great. I love it. Way to think of everything, Disney. Here in Germany, they have these little gardens. And oh my goodness, they are so cute. I like the look of the gardens and the driftwood. I think that is gorgeous. Oh, attack of the lizard. I love seeing all the lizards down here in Florida. I think they are the cutest little things. You're a cutie, look at you. I'm gonna name you Pascal. Isn't this the cutest? Oh my goodness, guys. I just noticed Snow White House. That shares with the seven dwarfs. 
is in this garden and there is a little Snow White. That is a fun little surprise. So in the little village for the train set here in the German Pavilion, they usually like to theme it to whatever festival that's going on right now. So this train that's going around a circle right here has flowers in it. And it's going by right now. As you can see, there are flowers. Super duper cute. I love the added detail that the Imagineers and the decoration team put in to everything here at Disney. So if you come over to the town square, you'll notice that they have flower and garden festival flags up on their uh, light posts. Do these flags look familiar to you? Those are the same exact flags that you will find here at Epcot for the Flower and Garden Festival. I picked out the Furushi as well as the Shrimp and Crab from the Japan booth. These look very good and they will most definitely be low in points. Fruit and fish are usually always very low in points. Okay, so the Furushi, that is six points. And the sh uh, Shrimp and Crab, that is just two points. So that is not bad at all. So I got myself some chopsticks. And let's start off with the savory. So we got the crab. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. The, the crab is not like a super fishy taste. It's really light and refreshing. And like, at first when you put put the uh, meal in your mouth, it's like, it's nice and sweet. And then all of a sudden you get like a little kick from the spicy mustard. I really, really like this one. This one is really good. I, I dropped the cucumber, so I'm gonna eat the cucumber now. Mm. This one is really, really good. I'm happy I picked this one. Okay, and now let's do the frushi. Get some whipped cream on there. Frushi is coming right up. That is really good. Whipped cream is really low in points um, which I love and I like how this is sickeningly sweet it has a mild sweetness to it it's very refreshing because of the fruit um, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about uh, sticky rice I've never had sticky rice before um, but I I like it it's really good um, they put coconut flakes on there and I don't really taste the coconut. I taste more of the fruit than of the strawberry, the melon, and the pineapple. Specifically the strawberry. Like you can really taste the strawberry in there. Then I can taste any of the coconut. Uh, I think the coconut was more for looks than actual taste. But other than that, it's very, very good. Okay, so between the frushi and the crab shrimp, I think between the two, the crab shrimp was my favorite. That flavor was so rich. I honestly wish that the last time we were here, I had gotten that instead of the salmon tartare. The, the salmon tartare has such a strong fish taste that when I finally got to the Japan Pavilion and I was going to eat more food, 
I, the taste of the fish was still in my mouth. I was just like, mm -mm, nope. I, I gotta give my taste buds a break. So, love the crab and shrimp. So up on the hill at the Japan Pavilion, there's a restaurant and it has outdoor seating. If you are at the food festival, come up here with your food and if there's table open, you can sit out in the shade with an actual table instead of hanging over a garbage, garbage can in the sun. So keep that in mind if you come here during one of the festivals. During the Flower and Garden Festival, you will find different displays around the Japan Pavilion showing off gorgeous bonsai trees. And if you are inspired by these bonsai trees, you can always go into the store here at the Japan Pavilion and buy yourself your own tree. This tree right here is 50 years old. It's a weeping fig. It's, oh, I love bonsai trees. One of these days, I'm going to buy myself a bonsai tree. Here's a little update that's going on right now in the Morocco Pavilion. The entire fountain area is completely blocked off. Let's see, wonder what they're doing in there. Can you guys see anything? From what I can see through the bush, it looks like they are completely redoing that centerpiece. The entire ground is all dug up. The fountain though is still in one piece, but the ground is all dug up. So I wonder what they're doing. Oh. Comment down below what you guys think they're doing right now. It's definitely getting ready for the 50th. That we know for sure. See how the fountain is still intact, but like the ground is gone. Oh, I'm so curious. And next up is the Voices of Liberty. I have been trying to catch them all day. Every single time I've gotten to the American Pavilion, I miss them. I miss them by like seconds. So I am one minute early. So it starts at 2.15. I am really excited. The Voices of Liberty are amazing. One of these days, I would love for the Voices of Liberty to sing the national anthem at the Super Bowl. I think that would be far better than some famous singer. The Voices of Liberty do, does this amazing, amazing rendition of the national anthem. It just, oh, it's so amazing. And every single time I watch them, it brings tears to my eyes. America. cakes from the China Pavilion. So they are potato pancakes. They are filled with water chestnuts and shrimp. And on top is the house made strawberry sauce. It looks so good. Let's cut this open and give it a try. Okay, so I got a little bit of papa cake, a little bit of strawberry. The inside looks really thick. I don't see any of the chestnut or shrimp. I'm gonna assume that's all like blended together. Oh, 
doesn't taste like a laka, like um, uh, that type of potato pancake. Uh, you can most definitely taste a little bit of the shrimp. I don't really taste the water chestnut so much. I really like the mixture of the savory that was the uh, cake mixed in with the strawberry. I thought that really evened itself out very well. The number of points that this is is eight Weight Watcher points. And so at this point, I have eight daily points remaining. Um, so I might be diving a little bit into my weekly. So, we got the cake. I think maybe like the fried bit kind of makes it taste almost like a chicken nugget. Okay, so a little upset with the papa cakes. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating than wasting your daily points. Now you can go into your weekly, but sometimes you just want to stay in your daily. I was hoping to stay in my daily, and I wasted eight points on the papa cakes. I think I was kind of like expecting something more like indulgent, like a laka. Um, I did not get that. It was very bland. Uh, I could taste more strawberry from the syrup than I could anything with the papa cake itself. Um, so don't waste your time with it unless if you have a child or someone in your party that's a picky eater, they might like the papa cake because it is so mild in flavor. But if you are looking for a spot to eat here in the China Pavilion, go over to the Lotus Blossom Cafe. That is the quick service here in the China Pavilion. And they usually have tables that are empty. So I just walked in, sat down, I was in the shade, there was some AC blowing. So that was a really nice spot to eat one of the offerings because I was able to eat at a table. Okay guys, fun surprise here. We are going to hop on the gondolas together for the first time. Also my first time ever going on the gondolas. And I cannot wait. I really hope that we do not get one that's wrapped, that we get a gorgeous view, especially right now with the way the sun's at. Oh, it'll be a gorgeous view. I cannot wait. Goodness gracious me, I'm excited. Are you excited? Of course you are. Oh my gosh. That takes off so fast. I thought. That's gonna be a fun ride. Disney transportation is so fun and so unique that it is a ride onto itself. I love the monorail. It's honestly my favorite mode of transportation, but we'll have to see if the gondolas can see it up to the monorail. Please watch your step. Do you ever stay seated? Yes. I don't know what the magic number is. But there were four of them and they put them with us, so. And we are off! <laughs> Woo oh, that's fun. <laughs> with a final stop at Disney's Caribbean Beach. Guys, look at how perfect this view is. We hope you enjoyed your visit to Epcot and World Showcase. Did you learn how to say hello in a different language today? Oh, oh, that's the queue that's really for Ratatouille. Y'all, it's gonna be so fun. Okay, we are going to be facing backwards this time to see how different that is. a little bit of a thrill. <laughs> okay, so if you just want to hop on a ride on the gondola from Epcot, what you want to do is you want to get off at the Caribbean. 
you don't want you do not want to get off at the Riviera. So second stop is where you will get off and you will reload in the Epcot dock. So the Skyliner is most definitely a whole lot of fun. I really loved going backwards. Going backwards at a little bit of a thrill because you just you can't see what's happening. A little bit of a surprise. It was great. I do think that the monorail is a whole lot better than the Skyline. The Skyliner will stop occasionally in order to allow people who struggle to get on with a moving vehicle. So it stopped three times and each time it stopped the cabin would get a little hot because there was no breeze going through. But as soon as it picked up, it there was a massive breeze. It was very cooling and relaxing. I would most definitely do the Skyliner again. But Monorail, still so much better. Here at Festival Favorites in the World Showplace, we are going to be getting the beef brisket burnt ends and smoked pork belly slider. So this is the pork and beef brisket. It is nine Weight Watcher points. It looks very good. It has a spicy mustard on it, a pickle. It looks very, very good. We are gonna have to give this a try. Okay, so I have a little bit of everything. I got the pickle, I got the brisket, the bread, and I also have the sausage. That is just a mouthful of meaty, delicious flavor. I love the spiciness that mustard gives. There is a little bit of tart that the pickle gives. The sausage is very good, as well as the brisket. This is a two thumbs up for me. 100% worth those points. That was such a fun day. We got to try some amazingly delicious food. The papa cake though, that was a little disappointing compared to all the other food that we got to try. That was so amazing. Although I suppose there has to be at least one dish that isn't up to snuff. I stayed within my daily points. Just went one over my weekly point. So I ate 31 points today which is not that bad. I am a little full, but uh, that's also because I just ate that slider, which was, oh, it was so good. I'm also really happy got to go on some rides, see some of the shows. I'm really happy we got to see Voices of Liberty, which is the best performance here at Disney, in my honest opinion. I love their acapella group. The, their talent is unmatched. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Please hit the subscribe button down below. It will allow you to get notifications from YouTube letting you know when my next video is out. Also, be sure to hit the like button. It lets me know that you like the video and that I am on the right track to helping you plan your next Disney or Universal vacation and leave a comment down below let me know what you thought and with that I am off thank you oh so very much for meeting D-World with me